uh, to kind of implement this software uh, and get it working well for everyone, both you as foster parents and then the caseworkers on their side of things as well. Um, so although Binti is uh, headquartered in California, I myself am actually a Minnesotan, so I'm right here in St. Paul, and I used to be a licensor for Washington County, so I totally know the entire process that you all are going through because I've helped guide a lot of families through it. So, um, so I'm really excited to, to be with foster parents again um, and, and share Binti with you because I think it really does, like Tally said, uh, make it a lot easier to manage and um, especially when it comes to paperwork not getting lost and everyone being really clear on what's required. Uh, it definitely definitely helps in those areas. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a like, quick four slide PowerPoint <clears throat> that just has some general information about what Binti is. Uh, it sounds like some of you have already logged in, so that's great. Um, if you haven't logged in, that's no big deal. Uh, we'll talk about how you can make that happen as part of our training here today. Do, do, do. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> over the course of today, we're going to learn kind of three major things. Um, first, what Binti is at all. Uh, second, how you get access to it. And then third, um, how you can get help using Binti. So just diving right into what Binti is. Um, so it's an online licensing application portal. Um, so we like to call it kind of like the turbo tax for foster care. So if you're familiar with doing taxes online, it kind of gives the same sort of interface where it's a step-by-step -step process of filling out all of your requirements, um, whether you're a new foster parent or it's your you know, 25th year of renewing, um, it, it streamlines, streamlines what that process looks like. So it makes the licensing clearer, faster, and more secure. Everything on Binti is encrypted using the same level of encryption that your bank or um, doctors would use uh, when managing their online portals. Um, and it, the encrypted means that you know anything that you're putting into Binti, say somebody you know were to try to attack Binti and get information out, um, any information, the second it leaves Binti, it's unreadable. Um, that's kind of what encryption means. So even if somebody you know logged in and tried to download something um, of yours, they it would be just kind of gibberish because um, only the information within Binti can be read within Binti. Um, <clears throat> and the whole organization um, as a whole, and the reason I even considered working for <laughs> a non you know, social work agency myself as a social worker uh, was that our CEO was actually inspired by seeing the process herself. So her her sister uh, went through the adoption process and she saw how confusing and burdensome the, the paperwork could be. And she really wanted to make a, a better way of doing things. Um, and so that's kind of how Binti came to be today. Uh, so in terms of accessing Binti, everybody, no matter what, if you're a new parent um, or if you've been with Ramsey County for a while now, um, is gonna log in the same exact way. So the web address is just family.binti.com. And this is gonna be mobile friendly as well. So you can load it on your phone or on a laptop, desktop, whatever device, tablet. Um, so whatever device you have, you can log in um, through the web browser at that address. If you haven't had a chance to log into Binti yet, uh, there's a forgot password button. So everybody in Ramsey County already has an account set up for them. Uh, it's just not activated yet. If you haven't logged in, so if you haven't logged in, you can go to this website, click forgot password and retrieve your password that way. Uh, otherwise, we also have a live support chat function that I'll show you in a second as we kind of dive in here and they'd be happy to help you on the spot with, with getting your password. All right, and then the thing that I'll kind of emphasize throughout this whole thing, um, we totally get that everybody has different levels of comfort with technology and that's to be expected. So know that Binti is a supported journey. Uh, this is not just like some new service that Ramsey is kind of just throwing on you and expecting you to figure out on your own. Uh, we have a full support staff here at Binti that are happy to answer any technical questions. Uh, if you're really not understanding, you know, how to upload a document or you're getting logged out of your account, locked out of your account, uh, we always have people standing by to help you. Uh, so that live chat function, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit, um, is available 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday, and that is the central time zone, our, our time zone here. Uh, and then we also have an email address that you can reach out to as well. With the live chat, you're going to get a response within 15 seconds or less. 
So it's really good if you need something in the moment um, and are like able to kind of resolve it right then. Uh, but if there's something you have a question about and you don't have time to start a chat, you can email us at help at and we'll respond to you within an hour and a half. So either way, you'll get a response same day, so long as you're not, you know, emailing at 8.59 p.m. Uh, to whatever uh, issue that you might be having. Uh, and then we also have a help center, which I'll show you in a little bit as well, that has helpful videos um, and kind of step-by-step -step, uh, guided instructions on how to do everything that you need to do within Vinti. And before I kind of dive into actually what Vinti looks like, um, for those of you that have logged in or for those of you that haven't logged in, um, are there any particular questions that people are bringing to this training today? Um, we'll kind of go a full overview of everything, but are there any lingering questions that people are really hoping to get answered today? Can I don't just jump in? There's somebody new here. I don't know. It just says new on the screen. I, I just want to take a comment. Okay. <laughs> so yes. you could, okay. let's talk Chandler. Okay. Okay. I have you, but is there somebody, somebody else too? Cause I see new on the screen on my screen. Okay. All right. So from here, I'm going to just hop right into Binti. Um, and just kind of for my own uh, information's sake, is everybody on this call like a, a returning foster parent? So are you someone who's already had your initial license or is this your first time being licensed with the county? Kind of what's make sure, and you can put that in the chat or unmute or. Relicense. First time, okay. Okay, so we've got a mixture of both people. Perfect. Um, so then I will make sure to show kind of both views. Um, Binti will, will adjust depending on where you are in the licensing process. Um, so I'll kind of show, show how that works as we go through. So thank you so much, everyone, for sharing that with me. All right. Uh, so as I mentioned, the, the website that you're going to go to to log in is just going to be the family.binti.com. So you'll arrive at a screen that looks like this. Uh, if you don't know your password or haven't logged into Binti just yet, you can just click this forgot your password link and you'll be able to uh, input your email. Uh, important note is that the email that you use to log in to Binti to complete your application is going to be the email of the primary applicant. So whoever the primary person on your foster care license is, uh, is the person that will be logging into Binti. So, uh, say you're the spouse of somebody and you use your email to log in, uh, Binti will say, hey, uh, we've got you in the system, but it doesn't look like you're the primary applicant. Um, so please log in with their information instead. If you're not sure who the primary applicant is, uh, you can always uh, reach out to our support and they can let you know, uh, or you can ask your caseworker to, to find out who's the primary applicant. So once you uh, log in on this screen, you will be redirected to our licensing portal. Um, and so this is a test site with just fake information on it, um, <clears throat> but it'll look exactly like what you're gonna see when you log in yourself. So I'm gonna start on the far left side of the screen here where the Binti logo is in this column. So when you log in, you're gonna default to the application page and this will look different depending where you are in your licensing process and we'll kind of look through all of them so that you can see what they look like um, but this will you know if it's your review year your alternate year uh, it'll say that if it's your re dhs relicensing year like this example is right now it'll have that information and then if it's your first time applying it'll have all the requirements for that initial uh, process so this is what you'll default to when you're first logging in right underneath that is a page that says my documents uh, so this is going to be blank right now because it's a, uh, a test site. Uh, but as you start to sign documents, um, as we'll see in a second, you'll be able to uh, use e-signatures to sign your documents. 
they'll start to populate on this page. So if for any reason you wanna access any of the documents that you've submitted to Ramsey County, uh, just for your own records or to like double check what you had answered on something, you're gonna be able to come to this page and download that uh, whenever you'd like. And then this page is also going to um, highlight any things that uh, you might need up-to-date copies of. Uh, so pet vaccinations is a big one and the fire extinguisher check um, annually is another one. Uh, it'll just remind you of those things that are due um, on a certain certain amount of every every certain amount of time, whatever I'm trying to say there. <laughs> uh, so right underneath the documents page is agency contacts. Uh, and so once you're assigned to a licensor, <clears throat> uh, their name, phone number, and email will show up on this page. So if you ever need to get their contact information quickly and you don't know uh, where to look, or if you lost their business card, you can just come right into Binti and grab that there. And then you'll see that your name is listed underneath there. And if I click on that, it'll expand another little menu. And there's a few things on here um, that will be of interest to you. So you can see that there are multiple applications right here listed. Um, so if it's your first time, you're only gonna have your initial application, um, but say this is your you know, second or third year uh, coming into Binti to do your renewal requirements, you'll see that all of the history of all the applications that you've ever submitted will be accessible via this menu. So if I click on uh, this first one here, it's gonna take me back to the alternate year that was completed before uh, before the renewal that I was just on. And then if I click initial application, it would take me back to the initial application that I started. Uh, and so whenever you're switching between each of these licensing years using that menu, when you go to the documents page, it's gonna show the documents for that specific year. So say you wanted a document from your initial application, you'd just be able to switch to that using this menu and then download it from there. Um, and for some of you, since Binti is new, uh, Binti will, if you're a returning foster parent, Binti will say that you have an initial application in here, um, but that's actually just a placeholder that was put in there to add you to the system. Uh, so if you go to, if you log in and see that you have an initial application that's blank, you don't have to worry about that. That's just the placeholder uh, so that we could add you in and give you an account. But as you continue to use Binti through the years, uh, you will see that, um, your completed applications will start to stack up there. And underneath that, there's gonna be an email preferences section. Um, so here it allows you to uh, unclick from uh, notices from Ramsey County. I will say um, that there's really no reason to uncheck this box. Uh, this is, this is kind of like a mass email function. Um, that Ramsey has the option to use to like let you know about trainings and, and stuff like that. Um, Binti will not send you any emails besides from emails saying, hey, your license is coming up for renewal in 90 days. Hop into Binti and uh, let's get your requirements completed. Um, so we don't send out advertisements. We don't send out anything unless it's strictly related to your license. Uh, this is just an optional thing. Um, and at this point, Ramsey County hasn't actually started using it yet. so. Um, just an optional thing to get like uh, training notifications and stuff like that from the county. But that's what that's for. Um, and then um, you also have the ability to provide your uh, race and ethnicity information, self-identify. Uh, you can also self-identify if you're an enrolled member of a federally recognized tribe on this page as well. And then you're also going to have uh, the sign out link under here. Um, Binti will automatically log you out after uh, a couple hours if you haven't done anything on the website. Um, so it's not mandatory that you click that button to sign up, uh, but the option is there if you're like on a public device or something and you wanna make sure that you're, you're logged out. And this little last bit here is just here because I'm on a test site. So you will not see that uh, when you log in. Any questions about anything that I just went over on that sidebar? Alrighty. Um, and so the bulk of your work uh, obviously is gonna be related to your applications. 
Um, so like I said, Binti will know kind of what year you're in. So if it's your first time applying, you'll get this view. Uh, if you're just renewing your license, uh, you'll get a more abbreviated view since the requirements are, are less than what it was initially. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. So uh, all the requirements will be listed. Um, there's, there's a couple pages here for those that are on the initial. Um, all of the forms that you need to complete will be listed and you just need to click into them. And you'll see that Binti will autofill places um, wherever it can so that you don't have to type your name like a million times. Uh, so as you start filling out forms, it'll kind of snowball effect and have more and more information that it can just autofill onto these forms for you uh, so that you don't have to, to waste your time typing uh, Quentin in over and over all day. Um, but everything um, with a red asterisk is going to, uh, excuse me, with a red asterisk is gonna be required and Binti will let you know um, if you accidentally skip something. So if I take out that zip code and click save, uh, we'll get a little notice like saying, hey, there's some questions unanswered, um, but don't worry, we've saved your progress. Uh, and we'll see on the sidebar here that allows us to kind of navigate in the form that there's this little blue pie chart that, that functions um, and allows us to see how far we've made it on each individual form. Um, so there's no requirement that you fill out everything at once in Binti, and you're free to skip between sections. So actually, let me go back to the initial forms and go to the Minnesota application, because that's a really good example of a larger form. Um, so if you don't have particular information, um, you're free to just kind of skip around and do whatever section you want. So there's, there's no requirement um, besides just getting the whole form done, obviously, uh, of how you accomplish that. Um, and it's broken into small chunks so that you can kind of save and continue as you go uh, and you don't have to worry about doing a whole bunch at once. Um, on the other page, I showed you that little kind of blue progress pie um, showing you how much was completed and you'll see when you actually complete an entire section, you'll get a green check mark. Um, and that green check mark is really what you're looking for across Binti. Uh, you'll see that there were some previous steps here that turned into a green check mark. And as you complete things step by step, uh, you'll just kind of see a sea of green check marks as you move forward. And that's how you know that all of your requirements are complete. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. We just go through with the document, answer the required questions, uh, and Vinti will guide you through that. And you'll see on the main page, if I exit a form that I was working on, there will also be a little progress chart to show me how much of the form is remaining. And then once the form is complete, you'll be able to uh, sign the form with the e-signature program. So I have a sample data button in my test environment that I'm just gonna click here. So we'll see when that document is fully complete, it'll say we're preparing your document. And then a little blue button will pop up with your name. And if it's a two parent home, there would be uh, two buttons with both of your names for you to sign. So clicking on that will bring up a window which will allow you to view uh, the form that you completed. So there's gonna be a lot of nonsense on here because the computer just filled in uh, random information. Um, <clears throat> but it'll let you get an idea of what's on the form, what you signed, make sure it looks right. And then it'll guide you through uh, whatever sections you might need to type stuff in. So for this one, we need a social security number and then a signature. And you have the option to draw. Uh, you can choose to just have it typed in, kind of whatever you want. And you just click continue to have that find. And so once that signature is accepted, you'll see that we got the green check mark um, and are good to go with that form. So Ramsey County has successfully received the form at that point. Uh, and there's nothing further unless you get further instruction from your caseworker that you need to do with that. Uh, so in order to move from this page to the next page, for example, uh, you'll want to see a row of green check marks here. So everything will need to be complete on the page before you're allowed to move on. So forms are kind of the big thing that you'll be working in. We also have this other section called supporting documents, and these are going to be things that you upload. Um, so if I go to proof of identification, this is going to allow you to upload your driver's license that they can use for the background check purposes. 
Um, and you are able to do this on your phone as well. Um, so you don't have to log out a huge scanner or anything. Uh, you can just take a picture with your phone, log into Binti on your phone, and then upload that photo uh, straight from your camera roll. Um, so I'll just do a fake upload here just to show how that works. <clears throat> Um, and since proof of ID is one of the items that has an expiration date, when you upload it, Binti will ask you for that expiration date. Oops. Uh, that's probably not going to work because I'm on a test site here. But uh, it will ask you for that expiration date and then keep track of uh, that expiration date to make sure that all your documents are up to date. And as you move through your uh, Later years of licensing, you'll see other documents that, um, like the PEP vaccinations and the fire extinguisher uh, inspection that needs to occur every year. Uh, Binti will send you an annual reminder, uh, letting you know that that information needs to be updated when appropriate. I'll go back to my documents. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, one second here, I got a little thrown around because of the test site. Um, so we'll see because I uploaded uh, that proof of identification, it's got the blue bubble there saying that it's fully complete. Uh, it's not the green check mark because I didn't put the expiration date in there. Um, but if I had, had added the expiration date, that would turn into a green check mark. Uh, and then Binti also allows you to provide information about the people who live in your home with you. Uh, so it will track other adults in the home. So there's a couple pieces of information that other adults need to fill out, like the background check and the individual fact sheet. Um, so if you do have others living in your home, you're able to tell Binti how many people are in the home. And when you do that, you're able to put in their name, email address, and phone number. Um, and the real focus is on the email address here. Uh, because if you provide their email, Binti will send them an email and give them their own login and their own portal so that they can complete their requirements online as well. Um, and in that email, it will uh, kind of remind them that they have to do their part of the requirements in order for you to be licensed. Uh, so it'll, it'll make it clear that, uh, that they can't just ignore the email, uh, that there, there are some things that they have to do. Um, and this will happen uh, throughout renewal too. So as you continue to renew your license, Binti will remind them like, hey, you need to fill out a new individual fact sheet because we're doing a relicense now or what have you. Um, so that's a really great feature. And then in terms of um, children in the home, uh, we also allow you to share who is in your home. Um, and this is gonna be anyone who's not a foster child. So if it's a child that you previously adopted or have legal guardianship of, um, or if it's a biological child, you can go ahead and add them into BIT team. Um, and when you add a child, I will just do a test here just so that we can see. When you add a child, uh, you'll notice that in my supporting documents area, um, it adds the additional information that Ramsey County needs to collect whenever there's a child in your home. So that'll be the background release if they're over 13, uh, and then a proof of ID, like a school ID or anything, um, if they need to do the background release. Um, say that you have a child in your home, but they are not over 13, that's okay. You can go into background release and just say, I don't have this document and select child is under 13 and you're good to go uh, until, until they turn 13. Do, do, do. Sorry, I keep it rashed around here going between applications. <clears throat> All right. Any questions? There's a lot that we just kind of went over. Oh, I see a uh, raised hand. Yes. <laughs> Go for it, DJ. Uh, um, when they ask for like the child under 13 for yeah. their information and ID, um, when I checked on there that I didn't have that type of identification, it asked for either a medical card or a school ID. Um, and so, so you uh, you were weren't able. Sorry, I'm right here. You weren't able to click the I don't have this document. Is that what you're saying? Or 
Right. right. It it wouldn't let me click that part or whatever. So oh, I had to find a I had to find a school ID for them. For like my thirteen year old, I had to find her school ID. And my fourteen year old, I had to find his school ID as well. And then um by me not having a medical card or anything, I entered in they um lunch ID numbers from school to verify that, you know, that they are in school. Yeah. And so so it sounds like you you had children that were 13 or older than for both of them. You're saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and maybe Tally, you can speak to this more too, but um, in general, yeah, if you have a school ID or anything like that, uploading that would, would fulfill that requirement. Um, I'm not sure if you want to chime in, Tally. Yeah, that's just something that is DHS requires us to have when we're doing a background study. So we have to do some type of proof of identification for the child if they're 13 or older. So things that work, you know, like, like you just mentioned, their ID or for school or a medical card. Yep. And if it didn't, I don't know like why Binti didn't work or I don't have this document. You know, if you ever run into problems like that again or it won't let you go, then I would just go to that help button right there and then have them help you walk through it. And they'll, I mean, like, like John said, within 15 seconds, somebody will be there trying to help you out. But I'm glad you, it sounds like you made it through. Yes, I completed everything on there. Um, I'm, my documents just say that it's waiting for my worker to sign off. That's it. Yeah, so it sounds like you're in a good place. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you did ask that question because that does bring up, yeah, if there's anything like technical that's ever not working or, or you're, you're not sure kind of what your next steps are in terms of where to go in Binti, um, that chat button, that chat function that I mentioned earlier uh, is accessible just by clicking this help button here. Um, so when you click that, it'll fill in your name and email address. Um, you just write a short message of whatever you need help with, and then it'll be sent over to our team. Uh, and again, it's a 15 second or less response time uh, for, for the live chat. And then um, if it's past 9 p.m., uh, or if it's a holiday, because we are also closed, the same holidays that Ramsey County would be closed. Um, this chat box just turns into an email, um, like it sends an email, so it'll look exactly the same, um, but it'll just send an email to Binti instead, so they'll respond to it as soon as we open the next morning. So no matter what, um, you can always get help through this button, um, but if it's between the hours of 8 a.m. and 9 p.m., uh, you'll get that instant response. Um, and if you have a screenshot or anything um, that's helpful for chat to like see what's going on too, you're always able to, to add that to the chat as well. Okay, so once this whole um, whole screen is a kind of that sea of green check marks, you'll be able to move on to the next page. I won't in this case, um, just because I, I don't want to click sample data on everything. Uh, but all the pages will work the same. You're going to have two kind of sections where there's forms, uploads, um, and then potentially some other information. Um, so in addition to other adults in the home and children in the home, on the following page, you would provide the references. Um, so you can put in the email address of your references so that they get their uh, reference request letters sent straight to their email and they can just re reply online. Uh, it makes it a lot easier uh, than the county just mailing it out, which is kind of how it worked in the past. Um, and then um, as was mentioned a little bit ago, um, there are some forms where you'll sign it first and then your caseworker will sign it or vice versa. There might be a form that says waiting for your caseworker to sign and then you'll sign it after. Um, so examples of that might be the home safety inspection checklist, um, things like that. Uh, so, so if you get to a form where it just says waiting for caseworker, um, you can just kind of hold off on doing anything on those until your caseworker goes in and does what they need to do on their side. 
So this is what that initial process will look like for people. I'll just go to a relicensing year just so you can kind of see the difference. Um, so after that first, first year, it's pretty streamlined. Um, everything will be on one page moving forward. So it'll be all the same familiar requirements. Um, and then you'll just be able to go through, fill out what you need to fill out, upload what you need to upload, update any changes in the home if there's new adults or if somebody moved out, um, if you have any new children living in the home, you can update that there. Um, and then once this page is full of green check marks again, you'll be completed um, with all of your relicensing requirements. So it's a pretty straightforward step-by-step. -step. Again, I'll just reiterate, you don't have to do anything in any particular order. Um, so it's okay if you don't have information for a particular section, you can just go ahead, click save in that section and move on to another one. Um, and you can do it at your own pace. Uh, there's no restrictions on like what time of day or day of the week that you're logging into Binti. This will always be accessible to you. Um, and then that live chat for sure is gonna be um, something that you wanna utilize if you have any questions, if you have trouble uploading a document, uh, if you're not sure you know, why it's saying a form is incomplete, if you're having trouble doing an e-signature, anything like that, uh, definitely reach out to the live chat between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. Otherwise, they'll send them an email and they'll help you the next morning. And then I alluded to at the beginning too that we have a help center and that's gonna be linked at the bottom of every page. Um, and so this is even here before you log in. Um, there's this little thing that says need help, we're here for you and the help center is linked. So if I click on that, <clears throat> it takes us to this page um, and right smack dab in the middle, there's a button that says I'm a family. And if you click on that and then go to get it and started, this is gonna go over everything that I talked about today um, in terms of getting your password, uh, what everything like on the screen means, like what the different sections do um, and all of that kind of stuff. And there is also a really quick five minute video that does a full overview of everything that we just saw. Um, and I'll kind of spoiler alert the first minute, uh, you can pretty much skip through. <laughs> the real meat of the content starts at the one minute mark. So it's really a four minute video effectively. Um, <clears throat> So you're, you're free to watch that um, on your own and look at that. Um, we also have some uh, annotated images to show you what, what section um, does what. So this is always available 24-7. Um, it's broken into sections. The getting started is a great place to start. But you, if you have particular questions about like logging in, um, we have specific sections for a bunch of different stuff. Um, and there's also a help section for other adults in your home. Um, so when they get an email saying, hey, you have requirements, uh, there's a little instruction set for them too, so they can get help if they're not sure how that works. So I would definitely recommend checking out the help center, <clears throat> um, even if for just for a moment, uh, you know, there's no, no need to spend like an hour reading through everything. Everything is pretty quick and easy to digest. Oops. All right. And then it looks like we have a question in the chat regarding the PIF. Um, is that something you'd like to answer, <laughs> Tally? Yeah, that, unfortunate, that's great. unfortunately, the PIF would not be added to this. And that the PIF is just our the form that gets um, sent to people for payment. So that would not be added yeah. to this program. I, I want to ask a question, though. Like, Can you show people how to do an e-signature? Or is that, is that yeah. possible so we could kind of see that? I don't yeah, maybe absolutely. people know how to do it already, but yeah, and I'll I'll do it on a on a form that um some forms like you just have to read and sign. So this is a, a good example of that. Um so once you see that blue button pop up with your name um or your partner's name if it's a two-parent home, you can go ahead and click on that. Um and you'll notice on the on the previous form when we fill out the W9, the e-signature looked a little different. Um, there are two different interfaces for e-signature, but they both do the same thing. Um, we're working to like streamline it so it looks the same for every form. Um, but effectively, it's, it's all the same process where you can either draw in a signature or you can type your name. Um, I'll just save that there. And there'll always be a next or continue button in the top right corner. Um, you, can, you can read through kind of the form to make sure um, you understand everything that it says. Uh, and then the areas that you need to sign will be highlighted. 
you'll just click sign here, accept, and that's all you have to do um, to sign a form. So uh, let me refresh this. Once that signature is accepted, um, you'll get the green check mark knowing that the form is good to go and submitted off to Ramsey County. Um, I should also mention too, um, even if you complete a form, um, like say, okay, let's do this fake application here. Even if you fill and sign a form, it's a big form, so it takes a little bit to, to get the uh, signature button. Sign there. So say I completed this form, I had the green check mark, um, and I'm like all good to go, everything, uh, everything looks like it's complete. If you ever need to make a change, say um, your caseworker said, you know, that one of the questions was not answered correctly, or like the wording is changed or something, you're always able to go back into the form, uh, make a change that's necessary. So let's just say we typed our name in wrong. I need to fix it. Once I hit save and continue again, it'll acknowledge that change. And if I go back to my forms list, you'll see that the e-signature button is back again, um, just to acknowledge that you uh, made a change to the document. So then when the caseworker goes in, they'll see the, the first version that you signed, um, as well as the new one with the change that you needed to make. So, so things continue to be editable up until the point that you're approved. So once the license is approved, um, you're not able to go back and change anything, obviously, because you've already submitted it. Um, but uh, the nice thing about the e-signature is that it also works with the phone. So, and it's really easy if you just kind of draw with your finger on your phone screen. Um, so if you're on a tablet or a phone, um, there's no problem doing that either. Any questions from anything that I've shown today so far? How comfortable do you feel that after this training that you will be able to just jump right in and get all your relicensing documents completed? Great. We've got one great. So that's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and really even comfy. if you're not super comfy yet, um, once you get in um, and really like after completing like one form, um, it's kind of just easy from there. Um, so, so yeah. So if you're definitely one of those people that's kind of hesitant about technology, I really just encourage you to just try like one, one form and see how that goes. Um, you can't break anything, which is the great thing. Like, you know, like I said, if you like answer a question wrong, you can just go back and change it. No big deal. Um, and uh, yeah, and so there's really nothing to fear in terms of doing it, doing it wrong, uh, quote unquote. Um, and that chat, the reason that they're there is to help answer any questions that you might have. Um, if you scroll to the, if you're not like a fan of chatting online, if you scroll to the bottom, um, or I'm sorry, if you go to our help center, we also have a, a toll-free number you can call. Um, so phone is an option uh, if you'd prefer that. Um, but chat is generally gonna be uh, the quickest quickest option. And I will say like our chat goes above and beyond. Um, I mean, they've spent up to two hours on the phone with people just to help them get their application done. So uh, they will they will definitely help you in whatever with whatever you need. So don't be afraid, afraid to reach out to them. I do want to say too that all the licensors are learning this too. So we've had it for a couple months now. So we're all in the learning process too with this. And, and um, the more we, we do it, the easier it's getting. So we're all in that learning process. And I'm glad that to hear some of the comments um, that they're happy to have this option. I know we're really happy. Other counties have already been doing this for a while. They wanna get this program statewide possibly. 
So I think it's really a great opportunity for our providers here in Ramsey County to be able to use this. I also wanna say that if you don't have a computer or maybe your computer broke or your phone isn't working, whatever, or you don't have internet, we do have iPads that you can borrow for a couple of weeks. So if something were to happen where you, you just don't have that, I mean, you can always go to the library or something like that too, but we do have iPads that you could use for on a temporary basis to help fill out this paperwork or do your training. Yeah, that's an awesome resource available. Um, and I will say that, you know, like as we're just ramping up here, kind of the main purpose of Binti is for you to really log in and do your relicensing requirements. Um, but kind of as the staff at Ramsey really start to onboard, um, another feature of Binti is that it handles the placement of children. Um, so another uh, feature that you'll start to see in, in a few months from now is on this left sidebar here, and you'll get much more information about this when it actually launches. Um, you'll actually be able to view information about the children in your care. Um, so it'll have their like basic information like allergies, medical information, uh, that type of stuff um, that you need to effectively care for the kids that are placed in your home. Um, so, so just know over time that Binti continues to grow in terms of what, um, what it offers and kind of down the road, it's gonna be more of a two-way thing where you're able to submit uh, submit like notes or uh, requests to your caseworker directly through the portal too. Um, so, so it's kind of starting on this more simple, you know, kind of licensing specific level, um, but it'll definitely become more useful and versatile over time as well. Any other last questions? before we sign off, you will get credit for today's training, just so you know that you'll get a certificate in the mail. I am gonna turn the recording off, so.